I'm going to cover the bulk insert basics for Udemy students taking the ETL course. And this is specifically the bulk insert syntax. You'll want to refer to the extract lectures for more details. Bulk insert, there are two really common bulk inserts that you will use. Um, about 25% of the time when you're dealing with large files, and by large files I mean you're looking at 100 gigabytes or more, um, anywhere from 100 gig to several terabytes, they, the data providers will usually provide you with a format file. On all other data, not always, but usually it's delimited and you'll want to provide specifics. So when we're covering, talking about bulk insert, there are, there's the destination and then there's the source. The source will be the file and the destination is the table. Now the destination must be created before inserting the data and obviously the source must exist. So with bulk insert, whether you're using a format file or whether you're using delimited, the syntax is going to be bulk insert the destination table from the destination file. And it's the same if you're using a format file. Now we have a width, open parentheses, and close parentheses. The details in the width will specify what we need to know about bulk inserting data. So the format file is very straightforward. If you're dealing with a large file and you're dealing with a data provider that provides a format file, you will just point it to the format file and then you will perform the bulk insert. And remember, your table must exist beforehand. So this is pretty straightforward. In fact, this is very easy to do. Um, when it's delimited, it's a little bit different. So that's going to actually involve uh, looking at a file. So one second, let me go to, I believe it's flat files. Yes. So let's just kind of look at where I'm getting this data. So suppose I wanted to insert uh, this data right here, Tesla CSV. So I'm going to open it with Notepad++. And you will see these data. And let's look at, so the field terminator is really the column terminator. It's telling us where the columns are. The row terminator tells us what are the new rows of data. So you can see in this right here, this uh, table, this right here is in a row, one, two, three, four. That's first row, second row, third row, fourth row, fifth row. And series ID, year, period, and value are columns, okay? Well, in the file, a column in this file is separated by comma. And if you have questions, you can always kind of look at the file and, and get a feel for it. But the reason why we know that is because we can kind of look and say, okay, this says date, and this looks like a date right here, and this looks like a date, and all these look like dates. This is open, high, low, close, volume. And if you know anything about stocks, you'll know that, mm, yeah, these look like you know open, high, low, close values, and this looks like a volume value, okay? And again, a lot of times with data providers, it'll come with some type of documentation. But a lot of this is pretty straightforward. So we know that our columns in, uh, like the series ID, year, period, value, are going to be separated by a comma. And so in the table, there's going to be a date column, an open, a high, a low, a close, and a volume. What are the new lines? What's the new row of data going to be? It's going to be a new line character. And Notepad++ does this really awesome, but you can see the line numbers. So Notepad kind of shows us where the next line is going to be at. And this right here, the row terminator, is a new line character. Now I know this, you know, this, just think of field as being the column terminator. Okay, so our table, these are going to be our columns for our table, obviously. So that means that the data actually start on row two. That's what first row, the syntax here means where do the data start? There are some files that look like this. And so the columns start at line five, and all of this is like, you know, hey guys, how are you? I mean, it's, I've seen some really weird writing like in the first few lines of a file. So it could be that way as well, and, and there are ways in which you can clean stuff. But for this example, I'm not gonna say this actually, no. Um, understand that a lot of times, I would say the majority of the time, your, your data are gonna be in the second row, if it's a fat file like this. Now, 
in a, a format file, no, usually it's just a data file. And the format file is going to make all, uh, specify all the specifics, so you don't need to worry about that. So the, the syntax of bulk insert is just bulk insert, the destination table needs to exist from the file. Obviously, it needs to exist. And then with, and this is where you're going to press specifics. If it's a, a vertical bar delimitation, you're going to change that to a vertical bar. If it's a tab delimited, you're going to change that to a tab delimited. If the row terminator changes, um, I've seen a few row terminators that are tabs, then you would change it appropriately. And then again, if the first row of data is somewhere else, it could be you know number one, um, then you would change that appropriately. But that is the syntax. And there are other things as well that you can do. You can research those on MSDN. Um, but that is a syntax for a bulk insert. And so as you, it's, I would say, one of the most reliable tools um, in SQL Server. So as you insert more and more data, you'll be able to figure out the particulars and uh, troubleshoot it from there. And then on the same channel, I do have uh, I inserted savings rate data, so you can see that live as well if you want. But there will be plenty of examples of that in the course.